Okay, so we are on. So welcome everybody again uh, to this last session for the time being of this uh, um, electric curves uh, cryptography course uh, with emphasis on the mathematics of uh, elliptic curves. I hope you had uh, uh, enjoyed uh, the course over the past, uh, I guess, um, couple of weeks. I'm actually, I forgot actually how many, <laughs> how many weeks it has been, but uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, based on the interest and the feedback that we, you know, people sending us uh, um, feedback via email and, and, and so on, um, I think it's fair to say that it's, uh, it's been very uh, successful um, course. Um, and well done to Rakvi as well uh, for making this possible. Her clarity um, in, in, the thing, in, the, in, in creating the course material and the patient to go through detail by detail was really amazing. And this is, um, without that, I don't think uh, um, this topic um, can really be uh, taught properly um, for uh, people who are not coming from like a strong uh, mathematical background. So yeah, so well done to, to Rakvi for that. And I also want to thank uh, Jackie, our new community lead, um, Jack Novak, for the reminders and also for uh, helping organize some of the, the, the logistics stuff uh, in the community, uh, not just related to this course, but also the uh, existing and the upcoming courses as well. So yeah, so let me just share the screen just to remind you about this motivation for this course, and then I'll tell you the next uh, steps. Um, I hope you can all see. Yeah, so the motivation for, for this um, curriculum uh, was really to enhance security understanding, you know, in particular, um, the focus of elliptic curve cryptography is because uh, these form the foundations of modern cryptography, right? Um, elliptic curve based crypt, uh, public key uh, uh, encryption and digital signatures, for example, you know, are the backbone of modern um, cryptography. You know, they are present in every single thing that we do digitally, <laughs> securing everything, you know, from securing our calls to, you know, um, uh, helping us, you know, authenticate ourselves and, 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 and so on in everything that we do nowadays. So um, the idea was that um, to do an introduction, but without running away from the mathematics, you know, because the mathematics at the end of the day is very important, not least um, with the, our community, you know, we expect people to leverage uh, mathematics in order to go on and uh, you know contribute you know to uh, maybe uh, creating new protocols or contributing to an exist existing um, protocols so in order to do that obviously a good understanding of the underpinning mathematics is very important so that's motivation one um, and the motivations two for creating this uh, uh, course the other one is later this year um and in fact, I, I, uh, the last, I think the final two sessions of this course was actually a, an introduction to isogenies. So isogeny based uh, cryptography is something that we are very interested in, at least in my company, for example. And there are a lot of interesting things in terms of uh, post quantum cryptography. Um, so we will have a course on post quantum cryptography uh, with uh, a focus on isogenies. So, but in order to get there, <laughs> you need to understand what uh, isogenies are. And, you know, as you saw from um, Rakvi's course, you know, these are uh, special maps uh, on uh, defined over uh, elliptic curves. So um, I hope you had a bit of flavor uh, about them, you know, and your understanding, the basic understanding of uh, elliptic curves really will help before you, you are able to grasp go to the next level of abstraction and start dealing with the isogenies. So yeah, um, 
so that's the the third motivation is the upcoming course on post quantum cryptography i'm not sure yet when uh possibly in the summer or something um so um just subscribe you know to the to the to our uh, um newsletter you know on substack you know you can go to quantumformalism.com and then subscribe or just go to uh, google quantum formalism substack and just uh, subscribe to the newsletter and then you will get uh, updated um you can also join the discord and uh, zulip channels uh, that's another way to get updated about the next activities not just the related discourse but all, all the other activities that we have in, in mind okay so this is the course of motivation and now that you um have done you know for those of you who have gone through uh, congratulations <laughs> for going through the entire uh 10 sessions uh, if you are interested in say um, receiving a certification um you need you do need to submit a project okay and this can be a group based project uh, meaning that you know you put yourself together with uh, other people who have taken the course ideally um or you can do it on your own obviously i recommend group uh, project you know not least uh, you know collaboration is very good and also it is possible that um there are certain parts of the course, uh, whether on the mathematics, but also on the cryptography itself, where you know you might feel more comfortable than someone else, or someone else might feel more comfortable than you. So by being together, um, it makes it, uh, um, I guess, less of a um, overwhelming experience, I guess, you know, to um, work with someone, you know. And the submission can be of theoretical nature, but also it can be practical. By theoretical nature, I mean you could just be like, you know, coming up with a new mathematical, you know, purely theoretical protocol, you know, without um, any implementation, right? Um, and it can be of a practical um, if um, you decide to, you know, um, write something you know some code um um or contribute to an existing project um so yeah it's entirely up to you um we don't have um we don't we don't we don't have like um uh deadline for like you know submitting things you know you can take your time and uh well obviously <laughs> i don't think um um one year from now if you come back to me to ask you know to say like you know um i've made we, you have made uh, um a thing for the course will be very very useful you know so ideally you know maybe over the next three to six months that will be the the uh um the switch spot uh the sweet spot for this um so yeah that's that's uh, that's 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 the thing and that's it um you don't need to rush to submit anything on the other hand <laughs> uh don't take too long to submit uh that could be um it could just be like we don't have time to to you know maybe we have moved on to a uh, more advanced um follow-up course or something so you know there's no research to review um your submission and so on the way you should, should submit just uh you can contact um us or contact me directly um i should probably create a, okay i'll do that now i'll create a form uh, later we'll send that on the new newsletter will circulate it on the newsletter i'll create a form let me just um, um it won't be in, uh, complete um so don't submit now i'll just uh, uh copy one form the registration form for the course i'll just copy make a copy of it and then create another one out of it um elliptic curve course submission projects uh, 
let's see, I guess I want to retain the same type of uh, info. Let's see, coursework. This is great, right? I get to get uh, create things. Coursework for certification. All right, I'll share the screen in a minute so you can uh, turn. Any comments? Yeah, I think this is great. Uh, maybe I should add another form called submission. Let me copy this one. I mean, another question. I'll duplicate this one. Call it submission material. Submit material. Now, submit materials, you know, open a git, uh, you can, um, URL. Um, I recommend that you use uh, GitHub, you know, where you can, you know, submit your stuff and then share, share it with us. Or um, you can, you know, if it's a theoretical, of theoretical nature, there's no code or nothing, you know, you can also go use, uh, uh, Google Doc or something, you know, uh, so Google Drive, you know, upload your stuff there and then put the URL, you know, point it to the to the submission. So let me just share this form. Uh, later we'll circulate it. If you are already on the on the um, on the list, make sure you are on the channel. Later we'll share this. Um, send. Okay, so I'll paste now in the chat. All right, so this will be. This is the form you will use to submit your work. Um, I'll probably add, obviously on your work, you will mention how many uh, people. I might add a section on that later to say, you know, whether it's a group work or the thing, but uh, I think it will become obvious. <laughs> um, as you um, as you submit, you know, because you'll look at the work and and see who the authors are. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, maybe I should probably stop sharing and share something else i think a, a very useful resource i think i forgot to do this especially for practical for for uh, practicing uh, is this very useful resource called um, by professor bill buchanan um, it has a lot of uh, resources i'll share in a minute uh, let me share the screen where is the uh, the website is called security site, a security site. Uh, I don't know if you can see the screen. Uh, I will share. Uh, I will share the URL. I will also remind others, those who couldn't attend today, um, you know, um, like there is a lot of, uh, um, protocols here and it does implementation as well you know um so you can play around um uh say for example digital signature algorithm for example um right you know it will go through it so a lot of theory that you learn with the rack v you know will be very useful in here and you can see code um his implementation and he has very nice diagrams as well to help reinforce your your thing, your understanding of this. And he does have some video as well. So for those of you who want to complement what you learn with Rakvi, um, uh, it's very nice um, to come here and play around with it. You can see he has implementations on like things like uh, uh, C sharp, for instance, you know, um, and, and so on. Um, there are some sections where they have, uh, he does have implementation of Python as well. So for those of you coming from Python back, uh, background, you can uh, um, 
you can you can you can take a look yeah and he has a lot of algorithms here <laughs> a lot of algorithms really uh, for you to play around with and you know go around and enhance your knowledge before you do your project so i really recommend you looking at this uh, this resource is very useful uh, this will definitely supplement what you already on the theory side what you already learned with uh, rakvi um yeah okay so someone is uh yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, helpful also follow him on LinkedIn. He posts, yeah, 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 yeah. Buka, uh, Professor Buchanan is very active. Um, he does provide very useful um, uh, resources online as well uh, on LinkedIn and so on. Yeah, but this site is more. It's like one, one, one place you know where um, he puts together all the resources. And uh, the, the interesting thing for you guys coming from a developer background, he does have code <laughs> um, where you can see the implementation, you know. So yeah, I definitely recommend you, especially those of you who want to contribute something. It could be some of the protocol, your contribution to uh, uh, to this project in order to get the certificate could be contributing, say, for example, to the digital signature algorithm that we, we contribute something, you know, on that, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, create some sort of extension or something or implement it in something, you know, something useful. Um, so, yeah, I'm just checking the chat. So we can work on this journey of into a, yeah, so the isogeny, so the question is whether uh, we can work on this uh, isogeny based uh, cryptography is like the starting point for the upcoming um, follow up, uh, at least in terms of post quantum cryptography. The answer is yes. Um, this is the starting point. That's one of the reasons we had uh, uh, elliptic curve cryptography first. Uh, not just the elliptic curve cryptography is very useful, obviously, but um, it also gives you the foundation for your isogenies um, in order to like so the prerequisite for the other course the post quantum cryptography course will be this course okay so anyone who has not taken this one of, of course you are welcome to attend but there will probably be certain things that we will not review we'll jump straight into isogenies <laughs> so you better know what elliptic curves are by reviewing um the materials uh, that rock v um uh, went through with went 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 through with you yeah okay so someone said uh, i missed a lot of lectures even finally i wanted to know do we actually get some to work with um well just having a recommendation we can't just uh, i mean if you submit a piece of work <laughs> project work then yeah <laughs> you would uh, obviously uh, have shown but just because you attended the course and actually we're not tracking you know what level of attendance you know is and, and so on we wouldn't be able to just write a blank recommendation to say um you are able to you know um because recommendation is like endorsement <laughs> and that's a very strong thing you know to as much as we would like to be able to do it but it's just as part of the protocol it's something that we can't you need to show us something um so i don't know if it answers the question but basically you need to convince us that uh, uh through either uh, you know submitting a project or some 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 work or maybe some other stuff that you have done um in order to get the recommendation Uh, okay, so that's it. Uh, I'll stop sharing. And anyone has any other questions? Um, or want to jump in? Yeah, so I had that question. So mm -hmm. I actually wanted to know, like, uh, for the certification, like, what is the deliverables? Like, what do you actually need to do? Um, it's, it's, um, we are not obviously asking that much. The key is we want to see that uh, you understood what elliptic curves are. <laughs> so anything that you submit that 
you know, indicates that, you know, uh, obviously if, <laughs> a good way to understand that is for you to implement a protocol or something, you know, to, to prove that, right? Um, either a, an extension making use of the existing protocols um, or maybe invent something, anything that uses elliptic curves, you know, it could be novelty, but obviously we are not expecting you to, you know, to invent anything, anything like, uh, um, Anything yeah. like you know worthwhile of uh, you know I don't know uh, a prize or something, <laughs> you yeah. Know, in so, anything, a Turing prize or something, yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay, I think you can probably answer Agnivo's question. Maybe my question would be next. Yeah. So yeah, uh, let me see. Someone posted something on the chat. So we can work on this journey into, um, are you able to elaborate more what you mean with this, um, uh, Agnivo, if you can, if you don't mind, you don't need to turn on your, uh, your video. You can just, um, turn on your mic. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Actually the second message should be the first message and the first message should be second message. Then it, then it makes sense. Uh, I basically wanted to mean like uh, in your first slide, you mentioned that uh, developing a strong gas gra gasp of uh, ECC is mm -hmm. uh, really important for the next course, uh, like isogeny based cryptography. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, why don't we just work on this, ga the, the gap of, of th this course? Uh, and the, the next course, like how ca do we reach to isogeny based cryptography from ECC and, and why the second one is important or something like that. Uh, and that would also make us ready for the next course and also get a project done, I guess. Yeah, yeah well, I, you mean for the project work, uh, basically, you know, uh, you have complete freedom, you know. So if you wanted to do a project on based on the limited thing that you learn with uh, about isogenies that Rakvi gave you, well, go ahead. <laughs> that's uh, that's great. Um, uh, so um, you can you can obviously do that, but um, maybe some people will not that feel feel that comfortable. They need to learn more about isogenies before they can actually do anything with them. <laughs> so, but yeah, by no means. If you can hack together something, you know, maybe learn more than what you've learned with this. Uh, quick intro to isogenies by Rakvi, uh, by no means, please uh, do that. And that's actually a, a great way of impressing us. <laughs> you will definitely get certified. Uh, we will issue you the certificate. Yeah, for sure. Also, I have I just one thing to say, not a question or something. It's like, so I just uh, was talking to someone who did an internship last summer on uh, something called Psych, uh, which is uh, a sort of isogeny based cryptography protocol or something so mm -hmm. uh, it's like a microsoft thing uh, so she was like it it, it just got uh, cracked by someone after the project was done so i mm -hmm. i was just asking whether uh, psych will be there in the in the course um obviously psych is one of the uh, famous psych is not the only um, it's famous because obviously it was on the eyes of uh, NIST, <laughs> but psych is not is not the only the only thing. Uh, we will cover um, the thing in general, and in particular, um, we will go through some of the state of the art uh, protocols that are based on isogenies. And psych obviously will be a, an interesting case study. We will um, ideally um this is one of the things that uh, i would like to do to analyze the attack the attack because uh, there was an attack against psych that obviously mm. it didn't use it didn't need the quantum computer to break you know just a laptop using some very obscure technique in algebraic geometry <laughs> yeah so psych will not be just the only one but we will use them as a case study um in order um to um help understand um uh, you know uh, better you know um, the application of isogenies into building uh, post computing cryptographic uh, uh, protocols so, hi everyone thank yeah you, hello thank you, thank you. yeah so hello. someone made more comment thinking yeah. yeah 
So yeah. Bombode, I had uh, one more question. So yes, I sir. think uh, two of our I think team members from the FQL Hackathon uh, did some presentation, right? Claudia and uh, Victor, right? So I hope you like the presentation. So I was part of the winning team for mm -hmm. the Quantum Federated Challenge. So mm -hmm. I think I I don't want to reveal the part of a project uh, because I think it's under IPC IP, right? So uh, what I wanted to ask is, can we extend our work further with uh, elliptical curves, cryptography, and Diffie Hellman, like? If it is possible, like when you go, go, I think you have gone through the project, right? So, is it possible to extend it uh, to something like that? Uh, you mean as in the context of the 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 thing, the the, the hackathon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we actually work on uh, federated quantum learning, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I actually wanted to know whether we can actually apply elliptical curves cryptography on that part as an extension. Well, a natural way to do that because it's uh, to do with the machine learning could be on the on the thing like uh, um, to come up with a, a protocol around uh, you know something uh, emerging called zero knowledge machine learning. I don't know if you you know uh, you guys. Let me see if I can share some resources uh, with you. Um, I guess the model that you are you are you are trying to um, let's see. It's actually a very nice uh, thing on this resource. I'll share this paper. It's um, it's the first thing that showed up, just to give you this uh, flavor of where this thing can can go is so sure sh surely you can you can you can along those lines you know that would be welcome but before you do that obviously you have to discuss with your team members you know <laughs> about uh yeah, yeah. You know, what exactly you, you 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 think you know and i think i there was one other thing uh i don't know uh let's see there was another very interesting paper um yeah so actually my concern was like whether it would easily integrate with machine learning and uh, so uh, that was my concern yeah uh, well there are certainly uh, applications especially in your case there um i guess one of the um things that you wanted to do um uh, is to make sure uh, that you know um the the whole scheme your whole framework is not for example subjected to um like adversarial attacks you know so you know in the federated stuff you can you can come up because you know for example the aggregator for example can can be subjected can be corrupt right uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so you could use uh, elliptic curve cryptography in order to you know make sure that uh, you know say for example the clients who are claiming to be clients are actually the clients right it's not like uh, you know someone else um uh, another uh, malicious client trying to inject rubbish in your training cycle <laughs> in order to disrupt yeah, yeah. your training. Yeah, so there is a lot of uh, things that you could do in the federated that actually elliptical will be very useful um, in in, yeah. that, uh, in that respect. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it would not be very much straightforward, right, to implement it. Um. Well, maybe in, in terms of the whole uh, framework itself, it might add some complexity to it. But in terms of the implementation itself, uh, I don't, I don't think it will be like a big, big, big hurdle because in, I mean, a lot of tools exist for implementing elliptic curves in particular, you know, a lot of guidance in terms of which type of curves you should use and this type of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds but good. But remember yeah. also, uh, as I said, you know, the submission of the work doesn't need to be uh, actual practical implementation. It can be just theoretical, you know. <laughs> so um, you just have to, you know, um, if it's theoretical, obviously, uh, some of the things of uh, um, is proving, you know, that a mathematical proof is some sort of a, provide some sort of a proof uh, uh, for for thing for um for the methods that you are using for the protocol 
um, then you know in terms of imp actual implementation of it you don't actually need so it can be a theoretical nature you know so in your case you are interested in federated learning you could look at you know it could be even like uh, you know I I've, I've given an example of uh, focusing on the how could you use elliptic curve to um, make the aggregator you know the, uh, the central servers more secure um, less subjected to adversarial attacks you know it doesn't have to be all the adversarial attacks because there are quite a few of them <laughs> it could be just one of them you know say for example the one that uh, you know you want to make sure that uh, uh, you have an effective way of um, knowing that you know say for example one of the clients connected to the aggregator is is genuine for instance you know um yeah something like that um it could also be on the clients themselves you know other stuff you know like you know they actually know that <laughs> the um the global model that they are receiving or something the communication that they are being uh, they are doing between themselves and the um and the aggregator you know hasn't been uh, tampered with you know this type of stuff so you can you can come up you know by looking at the framework and uh, you know start thinking about go and investigate some of the adversarial attacks that exist against federated learning and then you know see what you can do with elliptic curves that's what i will do first investigate what sort of adversarials are uh, there will be a lot of them <laughs> and then you know pick one you know it doesn't have to be all the adversarial attacks you know you can just pick one uh, adversarial attack and then see how you can use elliptic curves for that that's that would be my my uh my recommendation yeah that sounds good yeah thank you and it can be like you know uh of um like it can be like of of theoretical as i said you know uh it doesn't have to be anything like you know anything like uh, you know um, where it needs like uh, implementation these things yeah actually there are some resources here that I have um, to help you guys yeah um, so actually I have so one paper actually yeah. I don't remember the name of the professor he's from Wells Fargo oh yeah. I don't remember Samuel Samuel right so he uh, had yeah, one learning yeah 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 he had some paper on federated learning and quantum key distribution yeah. i don't remember so he actually have implemented this so actually i thought this might be possible right yeah actually i will just let me just for those of you now here let me just uh, paste this here uh i will upload this on github as well uh general resources for project um and uh, by the way i hope you like the presentation as well I, like we were not able to make it me and oliver but i think yeah. claudia and victor did a great work right yeah yeah no they, they did uh, amazing and i think uh, they should probably uh, i don't know if you had a meeting with them about the next steps yeah and yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. Forward. like yeah we were probably trying to have the meeting with them and yeah. uh, we, we will have a meeting yeah 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 okay let me just guys i will just upload this to github the the resource that i just created so you can have access to it right now and the people on youtube as well um let's see uh elliptic curves cryptography uh let your notes I will actually upload it here so I'm not mixing it with the lecture notes. Uh, sorry, everyone, I was late by half an hour. Actually, I had yeah. another meeting. So, yeah, I don't, don't worry, Rakvi. It's, uh, it's okay. Uh, we were just talking about the project, um, and I've shared some of the general resources that I shared with you, like uh, papers. Yep. Uh, that people for those who want to do project let me just uh, so here's a link guys on the chat uh, and i will share also so, there you go i just compiled this uh let me share it here 
Yeah, so for everyone, you know, you have a look at these papers, these resources, you know, maybe you get inspired, you know, if you want to do like <laughs> project, some, some, you know, some project around, around the stuff that you, um, you've been, uh, you've been learning with the rugby, you know, so, yeah. Um, as I said, you know, it doesn't have to be anything like fancy. It's just, you need to just show that, uh, um, you could use the knowledge, you know, you've learned something about elliptic curves and you are, you know, able to do something with it, you know, whether theoretical or, you know, actual practical thing, both are welcome. So both are, uh, you know, um, a proof to us that, um, you have indeed, um, made the off, uh, effort i'm sure you would so because what we don't want to do is just to keep doing like uh, you know courses where people come just and watch and that's it <laughs> you know because the actual purpose of us is actually not views you know we don't really care about uh, okay uh, you know um how many you know people watch our youtube lectures and these things what we care about is impact you know whether what we are doing you know has an impact you know in you you know as professionals you know but also in the wider ecosystem based on you know um potential projects uh, uh, potential contribution that you might do through the acquisition of knowledge which is our payback you know because eventually you know if you do something useful to the industry especially open source you know that will also be beneficial to us right because it could be something that we we might uh, as well use so that's why we do it you know in all the courses from now you know um we will require some project work um so yeah anyone has any questions so i was saying rakvi um uh, before how to submit it i've created a form <laughs> a google form i think there is a there's a link to it on the chat uh, somewhere uh, uh, that they need to submit um if they are hosting the, their their project is like uh, involves implementation like code uh, we recommend github or any other uh, public uh, uh, code hosting service it doesn't have to be github there is also GitLabs and some other alternative sources because i know <laughs> developers are now very worried about uh, you know their code being used by uh, chat gpt and the others that microsoft partners with right so <laughs> so if you are worried about that it doesn't matter you can just uh, you know use another code hosting thing or just uh, upload your folders your project files into into thing into a, a, a file sharing service or something and, and share it okay um and another thing i was saying uh Rakvi, is we do not have a, a pressing deadline though sometimes that can be very bad because then you know people are more relaxed so ideally i would recommend that you do this between now and uh, you know no more than six months <laughs> Because after that, you know, I will probably forget, you know, whether, uh, you know, you have taken this course or not, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, uh, if you do it sooner, you know, even better, because then you can uh, have your certificate and, you know, uh, and waive it, right? So, um, yeah. And if you need help with, uh, um, in case you've decided to do group work, um, you know, go to the uh, to zulip to the zulip channel you know if you don't have it i can give it to you now um but there is a link to it on our videos i believe and 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 also on the thing on the resources i i will put the link to it there on the course on github um join there and the ping uh, you know ping uh, ping us and ping everyone to say you know you're looking for someone to do a, a project with in order to get certified um so yeah that's it and also uh rugby i don't know if you can comment on this if you're still um with us uh in the case of uh, you uh want have some doubts on the mathematics you know or something in these things i'm sure that uh, rugby will be more than happy to uh, take a look and it's also a great way for rugby to see as a mathematician and um to to to, to see um the assist others you know who might be struggling with the with the thing a certain thing to, to you know if you come up with a protocol or something they need a uh, proof <laughs> and you know uh, you have a good gut feeling that uh you know something should work like uh, whatever you know this is where um mathematical proofs can be very useful 
um, this will be very, uh, I, I'm sure rugby will be able to, or should be able to have some time to, to help. Yeah, I'm happy to assist. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, can, um, I can monitor Discord or Zulip regularly just to see if there is anything. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Or just, you can also shoot me an email or, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So any other comment, Rakvi, would you like? Uh, 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 before you join, obviously, I thank you, you know, for amazing. You have done a fantastic, it was a fantastic journey. And uh, yeah, and we look forward to having you back again on another course or something, or uh, as part of the continuation of this in terms of the uh, other upcoming thing on the isogeny, at least to cover the mathematics of uh, isogeny is a little bit uh, more. They already have a flavor of it. You've done a fantastic job on, on the thing on on that. In fact, I was telling uh, um, the audience before uh, before you joined, your course, this course will be prerequisite for anyone who wants to take the um, the isogeny, the post quantum cryptography one based on isogenies that we will do later at uh, some point in the summer. So obviously everyone can join, but <laughs> we definitely recommend taking this course. If you haven't, then you will probably struggle, you know, because we will the course will start basically reviewing quickly elliptic curve stuff. So you won't have like the basic mathematics stuff that Rakvi had the uh, patient to to review, you know, like groups and all this stuff. Um, uh, we'll jump straight <laughs> into into you know we'll assume you know what the uh, elliptic curves are <laughs> okay the stuff that you learn with uh, with the rugby so you know um i really uh, do recommend you you know if you are behind in the lectures you know uh, that's why we put them on the youtube you know go through all that and then you know make sure you show up into the other course <laughs> knowing the basics of elliptic curves because this is not something that we will do on the other thing we'll jump straight into uh um isogenies so yeah yeah it was fun for me also and uh, mm. yeah, i'm really excited to see some projects and like how these things are implemented so mm. 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 i'm also very very excited with this <laughs> um and i'm sure we will have submissions and as i said you know before uh i'm happy to brokerage to think if you need someone um first of all it would be nice if you just post on on zulip and say hey i'm looking for a, a teammate you know to do a project you know ideally it would be nice if you come up with uh, go first before before finding a teammate <laughs> it would be nice if you can brainstorm yourself to see okay yeah uh, i have this idea along these lines that i would like to do but if that's not possible then maybe yeah you need someone uh, to brainstorm with you before you decide where exactly uh, you want um create a project so yeah and as i was saying you know the other security the resource of uh, uh, professor bill buchanan uh, is very useful you can look at there maybe that can give you inspiration in one of the protocols you know he has implementation code as well in some of these things so you don't have to reinvent the wheel <laughs> you know so yeah i don't see any reason why those of you who have taken this cannot cannot do a, do a project How do we join a former team, George? Uh, so, George, um, you can. Uh, uh, my recommendation is, okay, okay. I guess there are two questions here. The first is, uh, how do you join? Well, uh, you've already, uh, you know, you can join any time by, you know, um, by uh, connecting with people from the class via discord or other or we are also happy to send circulate uh the newsletter um because there are a lot of people who watch on youtube they are not necessarily um attending the live sessions so just reach out to me if you are looking and then put your uh, the best way to contact you and then we will say oh george is looking for a teammate to to do a project in terms of submitting the project i've just on the flight <laughs> created this form <laughs> let's say let me share it with you it's somewhere on the on the thing on on the chat it's probably lost now with so much uh, going on um i'll probably refine it by the time you actually do a submission <laughs> so well thank you bambode and uh I'll yeah. 
Yeah. And George, also another thing is, I'm not sure when did you join uh, because uh, I share this uh, resource, this website. Let me see if I can. The the, the bill site? Bill, yeah, bill, bill site, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that. That looks actually extraordinary just for yeah. uh, security in general. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the protocols that make use of elliptic curves are there. And the interesting thing is, uh, you know, it, it he does have explanation as well. So, uh, you know, you went through the mathematics with the with RACV. Uh, you will be able uh, to follow uh, those as supplementary, very valuable supplementary resources because he has diagrams. He has like uh, uh, even implementation in code <laughs> across different programming languages, you know, uh, including Python. So, you know, uh, and he has references in terms of implementation, you know, working with the concrete type of curves that could be part of your project. So, so someone is asking, um, what is the submit materials URL? Okay, uh, maybe I should be more, uh, so this is basically, uh, whenever you are hosting your project, say for example, GitHub repository for it, which is what we recommend in particular, if uh, um, you have code, uh, just share the URL for the repo. It doesn't have to be GitHub. I was, as I was saying, you know, I know some of you are very anxious that uh, Microsoft is using uh, uh, your code for training chat GPT and you are not being rewarded for it. So, <laughs> um, so you can you can use any other service you know including gitlab or you know any other or even just package your stuff into a, you know a, a zip it or something and share upload it on drive and we will download it yeah sorry i think i accidentally closed my entire window for a few minutes so did i miss yeah. anything in the last five minutes ah yeah. uh, i don't think i was just sharing uh, someone was asking uh, how do they submit the oh. the thing yeah so i've created uh, a form on the fly <laughs> which mm -hmm. I will, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, saw, I saw the google form yeah 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 and then and the question there was like um um what the url is on the submission yeah so i was saying you know it could be any anything like a github or gitlab yeah mm -hmm. or you know yeah yeah so thank you stefano about the, the thing so um yeah, uh, Bill Buchanan, I think he does have a podcast. I actually never <laughs> attended. Yeah, uh, I never actually um, checked it, but I think I've seen him because I'm following him. I'm connected with him on LinkedIn. I see him. Uh, think. So, yeah, it's very, very good. Good resources, really, not start from, from scratch and also to solidify your knowledge. Yeah. So I do really do do recommend you to scan through and and see and be ready <laughs> for the next thing on elliptic curves on the isogeny thing that uh, i'm looking um hopefully we can have rakvi back on the mathematics and have uh, uh, like reviews of uh, isogeny we'll come up with a curriculum before the actual cryptography thing um, kicks off All right. So, anyone who wants to make any comment, George? Um, uh, obviously, obviously, um, you know, you can always reach out to us again um, if you have any, any, um, any, other, any further question that you couldn't ask, and maybe you forgot or something. But yeah, I do. I look forward to this. To. Um, seeing what people can come up with in order to get uh, you know the, the certificate um yeah and uh we will be announcing uh, one of the things this is just a side <laughs> this is a side uh, a side note that uh, it probably doesn't apply to you guys who are here because uh, your mathematics is more because basically quantum formalism okay so before i go on the off thing i will just uh answer this question what's the deadline well as i was saying we do not have a deadline <laughs> so the, uh, the thing is do it as soon as possible within the next three to six months <laughs> so it's not like one year later <laughs> uh, yeah that would be but uh yeah we don't want to put any pressure time thing for you to the thing it depends on you know whether you want the certificate as soon as possible you know um you can have it anytime you know just uh 
uh, prove us that you have done you you got the knowledge the basic knowledge and you have, you 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 have, you have tried to do something and you don't have to do it on your own you can uh, as i as we are saying you know again you know i i i i, I recommend group work um not the least because there might be some part of the course that you know you might be struggling with um versus someone else who could be good at that part but struggle in something else that you feel more comfortable with yeah so yeah okay yeah so this is actually i forgot about this the next steps before the course because i promised during the course that um we would have invite cryptographers to come and give the talk it seems like that's not possible before <laughs> um at, uh, before the course ended so what i will do actually um this is actually great <laughs> uh we will create a a, a series on um, elliptic a webinar series on elliptic curves so um that we will be inviting people and it will be recorded for for them for giving talks yeah so this hopefully for those who haven't decided yet about what project to work on you know <laughs> you will have a lot of uh, um inspiration from our guests so it will be focused on around elliptic curves but in particular state of the art you know applications in things like zero knowledge proofs you know all these uh, um interesting stuff that um I know you will be uh, very, um, um, very attracted to. Yes, yeah. Stay tuned with that. Um, please do subscribe to Quantum Formalism <laughs> newsletter so you can uh, get notified once we do that. Um, once we start the series, we will do similar to what we've been doing with the Quantum T as well. Though Quantum T is a, a little bit more open thing. This will be like actual webinar, webinar where people will um, present and then there will be like roundtable discussion thing. Okay, so George, thank you so much. So Rakvi, George is saying he learned a lot from your uh, lectures, which is exactly what we want to be, you know, when we created this. And I hope Rakvi, maybe you can uh, share a, uh, a bit uh, about your experience in doing this <laughs> as a mathematician, someone coming from uh, pure mathematics. I know you were, um, obviously, you, uh, you were aware of the application in cryptography and these things, you know, and you did, I believe, some, um, uh, you did it, uh, some some work on, on on it, I believe, or a project or something. I um, no, I, I haven't done any research in cryptography per se. Like mm -hmm. like my research has been on elliptic curves, but mostly from theoretical side of things. I never worked in like explicit like crypto systems or anything. I just mm -hmm. read about it as a as a student or just as like like a curious like out of curiosity. So mm -hmm. yeah, designing this was quite interesting to me. Uh, it initially like the reference that I gave that I realized it like I picked it to be like a some sort of a mix between like maths and actually implementing stuff. Mm -hmm. so it was less on theory and like it was some sort of like it was somewhat balanced between theory mm -hmm. and implementing stuff. And mm -hmm. most of the theory was without proofs. Mm -hmm. So initially my impression was that this would be a good fit for this uh, this uh, course. But like as I was doing the lectures, I realized that there is actually more interest in the audience to see more mathematical side of things, mm -hmm. which was really encouraging and really exciting for me. Because like for me, it is obviously easier to talk about maths than talk about implementation of stuff. So, mm -hmm. so I yeah, that was a pretty that was very pleasant to see, and that was very uh, surprising, and that was also very uh, interesting. So, mm -hmm. so I continued on that. So if you notice the syllabus that we first discussed. So first eight lectures are pretty much what I plan to do. And for the next uh, last two lectures, I wanted to focus more on implementation. But mm -hmm. then as I said, like I saw that there is more curiosity to see mathematical side of things. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe I can focus. So the last couple of lectures, one, I thought maybe I can focus on isogenies because I knew that you are planning a course on isogeny based cryptography. Mm -hmm. And the ninth lecture, I just focused more on while pairing because while pairing is one method to attack crypto systems that is mm -hmm. used. Uh, quite widely so mm -hmm. i thought that would be one and there are other pairings like there are tate pairings and also other mm -hmm. sort of things that can be used but while pairing is one such and yeah this was overall this was a pretty nice and quite yeah quite refreshing mm -hmm. and very different from teaching in a classroom sort of an environment <laughs> it's mm -hmm. it's it's easy it's virtual it's a smaller audience more curious and mm -hmm. very specific and also like the motives are entirely different right like mm -hmm. you're not doing this for a grade on your transcript. You are really curious about this. So 
obviously mm-hmm. that makes a difference so yeah so overall yeah this was uh, pretty pretty nice yeah yeah absolutely uh, rakvi and uh, i think this is actually a good <laughs> a good uh, um um way to see that the community this is why i was saying to george one of the things that uh, quantum formalism does not run the community members do not run about uh, from mathematics because they understand mathematics is very important <laughs> so yeah it, it is actually as expected you know I, i'm very glad that people were shown interest to actually diving into the mathematical thing even more yeah so yeah. that's that's great yeah um george has a question on yeah the it's it's there on the only the thing on the um on the github yeah uh let me share the link actually uh, i think i shared it above uh yeah and this brings me to my other side note this probably doesn't apply to you guys who are here because most of you guys who are here you're already way ahead in the thing in the, on the mathematical side but what happened is over the past few years <laughs> um the quantum formalism community has grown <laughs> so more people join at later stages and they didn't take the previous courses <laughs> so there is this divide between those who know very little about say you know these abstract structures that are relevant to quantum but also other applications to those who are in the middle they have taken some of the courses and they feel more comfortable and obviously there are the ones who are more advanced especially the ones who have been taking our courses for the past three years yeah so in the light of this um i'm going to the first thing that we will do we will plan um some sort of um a something i call quantum formalism abstract uh, mathematics 101 or something just to bring those um from the very beginning you know um who joined us and didn't have i mean technically people can just go and rewatch the lectures but that's very boring i wouldn't do it myself you know <laughs> if something like uh, you know just my on my own so to create uh, uh, an environment where people can actually you know have the opportunity to uh, to go again from the basics to you know to 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 uh, to catch up with what we are up to in terms of the the stuff that we um the courses that we have had so far i will create um, um a curriculum um that will take people from z well i won't say from zero to hero but at least uh with the minimal um background necessary i think the minimal thing i would uh, recommend um is at least high school you know um level mathematics that would be very helpful but if people which i i assume a lot of community members from quantum formalism they are coming from engineering and other stem uh background they would have at least some basic like university level mathematics that will be very um a sweet spot they might not necessarily feel comfortable with uh, you know uh, abstract structures you know like groups and you know and 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 so on um but um they have like a good start and they have seen like uh, examples of you know of 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 groups maybe they didn't know that they were groups and this type of stuff you know so um expect to hear announcement in the next uh, maybe on friday or something about how that will work um and yeah and then after that we'll have like going forward we will uh, rate our courses in terms of uh, mathematical thing in terms of mathematical um uh, requirements into uh, i mean levels into like uh, you know uh, medium to you know uh, advance and somewhere in the middle i guess or the, uh, before just to help people um because i've had a lot of uh, feedback for example of people attending <laughs> some some part of the course but because they didn't have the, the thing and they basically just uh, it was the wrong course so it's like uh, being in a, in a thing in a, in a I guess in a ring or something with the wrong uh, adversary with the wrong boxer <laughs> being thrown out of uh, you know with a lot of uh, things that uh, you know you simply cannot um uh, will struggle because this is the thing with the mathematics is like things are built on top of each other so if you don't have the the thing you know understand the the, the basic thing underpinning some mathematical um notion it becomes very hard yeah so yeah so this is just a side note this probably doesn't apply to you but for those of you or if you know someone 
uh, who might be struggling and in particular interested in, in quantum computing stuff and wants to learn, you know, uh, um, you know, from the basics, you know, we'll start with sets. So this will be a set theoretic thing. <laughs> um, on a side note, um, I'm also planning a course on category, on categories, another one, because the previous course, I think this time we want live, live, live sessions on category theory. Uh, the other one was, uh, was recorded, but also, you know, Brian was um, moving to Paris. So um, I think there was, there's still one le lecture to go. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, uh, so we will have like a review on category and then we'll have a workshop on the application of categories in machine learning, which is something that we wanted to do, but uh, because I know um, we haven't done that. There were some lectures missing on the on the other introductory course, so we didn't. Uh, I ended up not inviting the the for the workshop on on the thing. So it's, we'll start again from zero, from scratch, and then do the work. So maybe three or four lectures. Uh, that will do. Compressed lectures on categories, and then the workshop, like maybe two two sessions or something on on the application side. Yeah, I, I have the impression someone wants to say something. I just wanted to say that sets can be one of the hardest topics in mathematics. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> they are very innocent looking, but they can really. They yeah, can they can be a minefield, right? <laughs> can be a minefield. <laughs> yeah. And about uh, category theory, I would really recommend that choosing a good reference book is the key. If you choose a good reference book, then that topic becomes really, really, uh, it becomes really interesting. Yeah, will actually be interesting for you to help us with the with the thing. Um, I will share my experience when I was a student. I picked uh, MacLean. <laughs> yeah, that's category really... theory for working mathematician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> category that's... for working mathematician. I borrowed it from library. I think last yeah. year or something. Yeah. yeah. I still haven't finished it. It's, it's... Mm. Hello. <laughs> it might be hello, some hello. people find it very hard, though. Uh, even though I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I remember during uh, one of the lectures in Rakvi's course. So she was uh, uh, talking about something, and this came up that uh, uh, to to define isogeny, she was like, uh, so imagine the 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 fam the set of all elliptic curves or something like that and i was like how is it is it a set like how do we prove it is it really a set or or like and then i like oh no that goes into category theory oh no no shit 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 so yeah i just it, the, the the conversation reminded of me of uh, that so it is it, it is a set if you go by germelo frankel's axioms of defining mm -hmm. set theory it 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 counts as a set yeah yeah, because it's a it's it's a it's a uh, it's it can be defined by a property. That's what you are saying, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah, you can imagine yeah. some sort of a universe where this all is happening. So that's why it makes sense to define it as a set. And then, of course, when you have defined a set, you can obviously define subset using whatever property you wish. So that's really the key of Jamelo Frankel's axioms. It's like you have to be like you have to be restrictive in defining your set. But then once you have once you're clear on notion of your set, then your subsets can you can be relaxed about your subsets. So yeah. that's why that yeah. So you're about. saying it it, it, it resides yeah. inside a, a set that you already know which is is a set. So that's why it's a set. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you think of let's say all genus one curves, right? So. The, Genus one curves, obviously, they sit in projective space and everything. And then elliptic curves are basically those genus one curves that have a point over the base field itself. Um, so if you think if you think with that property, then yeah, it makes sense to talk of set of all elliptic curves. But yeah, right, like, right, right. yeah. Like if you think about the initial paradox that led to Jamelo Frankel's axioms, was this basically what was that example? Um, yeah, so to the set of all sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set, of set. set of all sets. The, the yeah. problem with that is that you don't have a universal covering for that, right? If you take like set of all sets, basically, how do you, where do you envision that? There is not a universal uh, thing where you can imagine this. That's why all these paradoxes keep happening. 
but as long as you are in some nice like ambient space and like when it comes to elliptic curves and these things they are so motivated by geometry you or you you have some ambient space in which you are thinking like in this case we have projective spaces and curves and varieties for example so we can talk about sets in this but yeah abstractly it can really be a nightmare if it's <laughs> yeah it is a minefield indeed, as it we are saying. Yeah. yeah, and for the purposes for most of our courses, at least the, the ones that uh, I was mentioning before, uh, <laughs> we will uh, make a note that it will be Zermelo, ZFC, Zermelo Frankel plus the axiom of choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's where uh, the universe where we will be operating on. Yeah. Um, I, I re remember a, uh, like a part of uh, a, a phase of uh like my undergrad life like it was during covid i came across uh, proofs uh, and i realized it's a it, it should be a norm to to uh, to write proofs where you 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 write it explicitly that whether this statement is in zf or is, is it zkf uh, uh, i mean is it without axiom of choice or, or it assumes that so I, I so i even started writing proof like that then i realized okay no you can't uh, you, this is too this is too much to deal with so i just yeah forgot about it like. i cannot imagine most things without axiom of choice if you ask <laughs> yeah yeah it proves itself uh, obviously uh, people working in the foundation of mathematics they, <laughs> they, right. they yeah they uh, i won't say they lose sleep but they are uh, thinking a lot about the thing it's initially it was a very controversial axiom right but i think it's still it a lot of things yeah exactly yeah still is but you yeah. you, you figure out use... that with this your life really simplifies so why yeah. not use it <laughs> yeah yeah you can often use gentler versions like dependent choice or countable choice in practice yeah all <laughs> yeah. unrestricted choice can lead to strange paradoxes yeah which is what uh, as a mathematician you want to avoid right yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah so changing here a bit i know we are running um, it's actually good that this discussion has been lively so muhammad reza is sharing what is a hyper elliptic curve so this is actually a bit what um Ra rakvi uh, reminded me when she mentioned that uh, you know about the genius you know elliptic curves are genius one curves right yeah. so um hyper elliptic curves are in elliptic curves with higher geniuses you know so and there are actually that's why i recommend this book um protocols people are uh you know trying to build protocols with the higher genius elliptic curves because they tend to be in theory more effective you know you can you know more resource more resource um um efficient than genius one which is what we are used to you know in terms of the existing most of the existing protocols so take a look at this this uh, this book. I've shared the uh, the link to download it. It's very very interesting. And this actually uh, another thing that we can um, talk to Rakvi is possible if she could come back to actually um, cover uh, a bit maybe uh, three or four session on the curves with the higher genesis, for example, <laughs> before we even start the isogeny based cryptography course. This is something that we can I will discuss with Rakvi on the side as a continuation of this uh this thing maybe we can do like a combination like three or four lectures on isogenies yeah and then three or four lectures on hyper elliptic curves and then yeah that that could also yeah that's probably the best uh, thing because then it's uh everything is close to each other and people will not forget as well yeah yeah, yeah okay uh but yeah for those of you who are curious please have a look at the, this uh handbook um, I think there is another book by Rosen that I I wrote in my lecture notes in last lecture. It's elliptic curves and cryptography or something. It's a really nice book. So. Ah, okay. They also cover. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So, um, without wanting to take much of your everyone's time, does anyone wants to make any final comment or something? You know, before we wrap up, it's been uh, amazing. Uh, Rakvi, thank you so much. So I was thanking, I heard it, uh, you know, at the beginning saying, you know, it, it was amazing, amazing course. And I wanted to uh, thank you for uh, taking your time and, uh, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I enjoyed myself. So. Yeah, it was it was great. I want to thank all George as well for the community stuff, for all those of you who are like, uh, you know, um, present, you know, in every week, 
um, which is very motivational because the last thing that someone <laughs> doing a lecture <laughs> wants is to be talking to 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 um, in this case Rakvi to be talking to ourselves. So it's good to have uh, actually an audience, you know, small audience, but uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, it was very engaging. You know, the sessions and you know. That's exactly what we want. And I want to thank Jackie, Jack Novak as well for sending the reminders, <laughs> because this is some of the things that we were very behind <laughs> with, <laughs> because uh, it was before we brought Jackie, it was just me. I had to do the reminders and sometimes I forget because I have like uh, zillions of other things to, to, to do. <laughs> and then I end up uh, sending the reminders like five minutes before. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so George is saying ja Hello, Jackie is uh, a lifesaver. One yeah. Hello, I, I, I. Yeah, go ahead, please. You want to say something? Yeah, so I, I, I was just uh, making a book recommendation, uh, with which, which goes in the context as well, maybe. So it's it's random curves. That's the book name. It sounds like a mathematical book, but it's not. It's just like a, uh, it's it's by Neil Koblitz who is a mathematician and and it's like he he also has books on like modular forms and stuff like that but the books the book is basically his story of how he was a number theorist in his early days uh he, he did his phd and all that but he realized very early that he couldn't do anything uh, like important any important uh, research in number theory that he could do so he uh, and he was in the era when uh, when like the, the use of number theory in cryptographic was re just 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 being active it like it just started so he was lucky enough to to then just move towards cryptography so now he he uh, i i just checked like he uh, guides people in number theory and cryptography both but uh, like yeah so uh, why is it like goes with the context because we are studying that the course was like basically number theory course right it's like it's basic but like but uh, we want to use it in cryptography so maybe he is a right person or his life or career or whatever to to know that people have already done it so it's not a like a big deal to see uh, people who are in the middle not just people who are only doing uh, academia uh, re research or only doing cryptography uh, so yeah i just wanted to say this yeah sounds like an inspiration to me yeah yeah definitely i was about to say rakvi uh, i mean koblitz uh, i think i didn't i share a reference at some point or uh, i'll i'll gather the the uh, reference i will put actually a new file on the thing uh, over the coming days with more resources including this uh, thing from koblitz yeah yeah um, thanks recommendation i know yeah yeah and um it's actually very very good because we are actually more or less in the same thing as because you know elliptic curve cryptography itself you know the early days of it was like i believe in the 80s or something or 70s nobody actually thought <laughs> they were like uh, going to be you know possible to implement them and these things you know until the early 2000s or something that people started actually playing with them and out and then they form the backbone so we are actually more or less at the same, especially with this uh, post quantum stuff regime that we are coming into, you know, with new protocols, you know, um, being designed. So it's great opportunity for mathematicians, especially people connected with the, you know, some of the, the right branches of mathematics, like number theory slash algebraic arithmetic geometry, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so on. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity for, um, uh, people like Rakvi, <laughs> uh, young researchers, you know, that um, are looking for, uh, you know, um, potential opportunity, uh, not necessarily within academia, but also outside. Yeah. So Rakvi definitely, uh, Koblitz is a, is a is a good good inspiration actually to see. I'm sure that he could have uh, maybe uh, tackled a problem or something, but I guess acad uh, academia over the past. Uh, decades or something does not encourage people especially young people <laughs> to work on hard problems because of this pressure of publishing papers and these things and you know and it's I very hard if yeah. you really want to be courageous you really have to wait till you get your tenure and even yeah. then i'm not sure how courageous you can really be because yeah yeah with the current environment i'm sure everyone is familiar with the 
yeah what is happening in us these days well, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is it does not encourage you know a famous example is andrew Weil when he proved the fermat last year he was doing it uh, you know hidden <laughs> I don't think he even he didn't have the courage. I, I think. Um, yeah, from but what from I what heard, I've heard, I think he did the smart thing. He really kept yeah. something, everything, one or two years, every yeah. one or two years. So he, he was, yeah, yeah. he was yeah. a bit smart about how he planned out. He planned yeah. himself, but still, yeah. you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, and I think industry can actually play a role, you know, by enabling um, researchers, you know, whether in mathematics or other um, fundamental. Uh, uh, fields of science, you know, uh, to um, extend, they can focus on apply. This is one of the things that we want to, uh, we are trialing out is to give young researchers, um, mathematicians in particular, an option, 20% of their time, they can do whatever research they want. Okay, so, you know, um, I mean, the tech companies, they do this, but uh, like they encourage people to, you know, do some like, you know, uh, project on like, uh, you know, open source stuff and these things. Um, we don't, we we want to extend that. So it's not just, you know, they can like uh, do fundamental research as well. That was uh, something that uh, I think they wouldn't have the opportunity, especially being young in the early careers to be encouraged to be bold, you know, and there's no need for publishing. So that's, that's one of the things that uh, we are trying hard to um, hopefully convince other companies also to do. Yeah, I mean, ideally how things should be that you are curious about something and then you land upon something interesting and that should lead to a publication. Yeah. But unfortunately, the scenario these days is that you want to have a publication. Yeah. <laughs> That's how everything starts. And yeah. like, it's really disappointing at some stage. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, just about recommendations. So I just wanted to recommend a book. I think this is by Koblitz as well. I'm forgetting the title, but he discusses congruent number problem in this book. It's not a long book. It's quite like, I would say like a short story when it comes to mathematical books. So the thing, so the theme of the book is like, he's discussing congruent number problems, but he, tra so the aim is to show why solving congruent number problems, how this connects to BSD conjecture on elliptic curves. And he does this over four chapters. So each chapter, like, and you can read a lot of stuff through this problem. So you can learn about L functions and things like that under the umbrella of congruent number problem. So for students and uh, like who are curious about different topics, I think this is a really good book to check out. I'm forgetting the name. I'm so sorry. But no, I think no. one of Koblitz's books. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. And George also made a comment here that uh, Andrew Wiles had the tenor, yeah. uh, the Zerwan Zhang, who contributed to it, worked on Twin Primes. He didn't have a position secure, so he had to work in the subway. <laughs> but I think he later worked at IES for some time. Yeah, I guess after. Uh, after, I, he, I after, yeah. Mm. Yeah. after he made his breakthrough. Mm. Oh, yeah. Academia changed their mind about him once he succeeded. Yeah, it's like uh, this case of uh, this Nobel Prize in medicine, I think, with the RNA thing. Uh, yeah. Apparently, university, it was actually Pennsylvania. <laughs> they yeah, didn't, it they, they denied yeah, it. You know. Yeah, 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 they, they, they didn't. Uh, and now she won it, and the, the university is all proud. <laughs> <laughs> they should, yeah. if they are yeah. in right mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the thing to say that we actually need academia. Definitely needs to reform in terms of uh, you know risk taking. You know, to enable young people uh, uh, to create um, opportunity for them an environment where they can uh, you know take risk in going. Just like in in technology, like in uh, entrepreneurship and these things, you take a risk trying to do something. It might not work, you know. But if it does, the upside is huge. So I think the same things should be thing in academia where. Young yeah, people are encouraged to uh, tackle hard problems or come up with new um, ideas to build some new theories and so on. I think the key to these things is really everything comes down to funding at the end yeah. of the day and your money, right? I mean, like hypothetically, let's imagine like if I had like, let's say X million dollars in my bank account, I really wouldn't be looking for a job, right? I, I would yeah. I would simply sit at home and work out my mathematics. So. Mm. The key is really, and even universities, they really have various constraints when it comes to it. So it's, yeah. It's... And the people that make the decisions use 
kind of a proxy measure. They don't want to evaluate somebody's work. They just want to say, oh, you've done five papers in four years and X people have referenced those, not even looking at whether there's any content in that. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things um, that education definitely and higher education and uh, research definitely needs needs a reform. And hopefully in the industry, you know, as more people, especially people coming from uh, academia, jumping into industry and being successful, you know, there's a huge opportunity. And I hope also like some sort of a sense of responsibility to try to give back into into the thing, into, into academia in order to help reform it, you know. So yeah, I mean the the really like really like the reason I want to switch to industry permanent like for good is basically like we have job security there. And yeah. once your finances are settled, then you can really think about taking like like let's say mathematical resources. Like and you can really explore interesting stuff on your own, right? Yeah. Like in your academia, like you have temporary jobs most of the times, and you know you are on some sort of a treadmill and you don't yeah. really trying to explore fun things and yeah yeah that's yeah. the sad part unfortunately yeah so fingers crossed then uh you know we will uh this there will be a movement of new generation transitioning into the into the thing into into industry and hopefully uh people will be successful and you know be able to uh um to make positive changes in terms of like funding you know offering funding uh, to research institutions, but then put a mandate to say the funding that we are donating to the university, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, you give it to the thing, people take risks <laughs> on the bold ideas, you know, so it, publishing uh, this publish and perish it doesn't work. Five yeah. years and then let them yeah. just work on this. Yeah. yeah, especially upcoming young researchers, you know, this is the key, you know, yeah. I think in industry even as uh, small startups are more ready to embrace risk than giant big corporations yeah yeah i couldn't agree more okay so uh someone is a housing industry is called to to like in fang or uh, visa i mean there are a lot of uh, um written blogs about you know working in the fangs you know fang meaning uh, i believe facebook apple amazon netflix and google if i'm not mistaken um though you need to use uh, i don't know with NV nvidia and also microsoft right <laughs> <laughs> so there need to be some uh, some some other acronym to include those um yeah uh, even microsoft yeah 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 so yeah there are a lot quite few but you know the general thing is that uh, they do offer uh, you know obviously this is the thing i read a, a paper actually about brain drain like how the big tech are actually sucking academia academics you know they're just especially in certain areas that are hot in topics like uh, research in artificial intelligence for instance you know um they are sucking because obviously they can offer a six-figure <laughs> salary that uh, you know uh, uh, universities even the top uh, the um, the uh, the most well-funded universities will struggle to to match you know so yeah, no you you can never make a six-figure salary as a professor yeah I mean, it's really really like you really have to climb up the ladder it's yeah really later part of your career yeah 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 but now these you know these uh tech companies well-funded companies uh, in certain areas, they are offering a lot of these, uh, which is tempting for obviously. If you are a researcher, you look at this. So, if I yeah. work two years, I will make uh, my life. <laughs> Money is one thing. It's a uh, like better work-life balance, better yeah. job security. Like also, like you know, you don't have to change your house every two or three years, and yeah, you can actually start a family, right? That's, yeah, that's, like that's people, the other... people want this, so why yeah. wouldn't they switch? You know? Yeah. But so, as a yeah. academician, you can also uh, moonlight, right? Which you can't uh, as an in, in industry. Like, uh, if you tweak your research area in such a way that it has decent intersection with industry, uh, then you can obviously, uh, let's say, uh, I know 
professors who not like professor professor like associate or assistant whatever they they have uh, like their they, they have some schedule in their week that that is free for companies which will uh, who will ask him to give like mentoring session or up or upskilling session to their employees uh, so that's like a good uh, like a uh, I mean, one time income and also there are like passive incomes via Coursera and stuff like that, right? Uh, and yeah. yeah and I uh, so no, I kind of look full time yeah, uh, consultant. Some uh, flexibility in things you. Yeah, definitely. You are seeing a lot of uh, like uh, hustling from academics, you know, across the disciplines, uh, creating side, uh, basically like, uh, you know, side, uh, side businesses, you know, to supplement, also building brand, you know, that's why you have a lot of uh, academics nowadays, um, even in the mathematics, in the context of mathematics, like field medalists having YouTube channels, for instance. Like I remember, I think uh, the first name that comes because I've seen his videos recently, Timothy, Timothy Gowers. <laughs> uh, he does have a, a very famous uh, YouTube channel and yeah, other people are also doing um, doing that. There's a really good number theory channel. I think it's called Number File or maybe. As well, yeah. Number, yeah that's, mm -hmm. really, that's really good. Richard, uh, Richard Bocart is also there, right? Uh, but but i guess uh not even as a like I, I thought that even researcher for even researching point of view they need to ha have a brand or market themselves right uh, so that people know about their research and actually read their papers or otherwise uh, how will uh, i mean e i mean like let's say uh, some percentage of their research is for views and 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 fulfilling the count right so they want more people to view view, uh, view their papers. So, I mean, I have seen professors who hustle so much, like hustle. It's like you are in consulting from a 16, 20 hours. Say they hustle like they 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 are as much invested in doing projects with students, undergraduate, B Tech, M Tech, as much with other collaborators. They like they will bring students uh, that with who, who with whom they are collaborating. In the meeting that they're doing the meeting with their collaborator, I mean, uh, that's like uh, academia made them to do that. Like, uh, like, uh, I mean, they they're like as much time uh, uh, this thing as much as like a CEO or something. But they aren't getting as much as paid. I mean, they they are. Exactly. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the point. yeah. But their their thinking is such a way to them that matters because the research value of that is same as like a, like a net net money wise value to to some individual. But if you think in a capitalist way and and if you can keep the balance, you can do like decent research and also like a, be be a, like a consulting to and in, 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 that that's a good also a good way because if you are in touch with your in some industry you are giving your potential phd students an opportunity that that if you work with me you you not only have a good research exposure but you also have a good connection wise exposure that if you don't want to uh, like uh, continue into academia you will find some something because uh, these people have doing uh, these these companies are work match with whatever we research we do so that they have a purpose not just like they don't have a blind purpose that okay i have to uh, do i have to find a postdoc it's same like after uh, 12 you are finding a university right it's, exactly. it's like i mean you will be surprised how many people want to do postdoc just because they don't want anything else like they don't know what else to do so mm -hmm. which is quite i mean quite unfortunate in my opinion like the way i see it i think for young people like exploring industry research is quite like i think they should be encouraged to do that because not just that that would give them some research exposure there are also mathematicians who are interested in these things like for example this entire simon's collaboration on arithmetic yeah, yeah yeah i was just thinking of it like yeah he yeah. did that right like i mean yeah. so simon's collaboration and everything and people are interested like people are uh, they're touched people there are touch are in touch with everyone so you can you can be in collaboration with mathematicians as long as exploring industry 
and then in your later career if you want to switch to a classroom teaching environment you can do it and then you have much more experience to share with your students right you have so much to bring to a classroom as compared to a phd student who is taing or like a postdoc who is teaching like what can i teach my students that they cannot learn from a textbook at this stage of my career so like it like even if you want to be in academy i think you should have some experience so that you can bring that experience into classroom for your students so yeah the, 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 actually this last point is is like the most important thing to like i, I like for example when i was in like uh, in, in ut days i used to watch like lectures like uh, uh, mit lectures and all that and their professors uh in any department like the chemistry or bio when they're lecturing they are giving examples uh which is like a very decent example of their everyday life like for example i have a student from some culture and then another student from another culture but everyone have some food right some sandwich or whatever and then they bring that up and they, they try to explain some uh, at atomic concept and and, and whatever so i mean you you need not only just academia you need to explore a lot so that you can actually uh, actually teach anything at all or for that matter i mean like uh, yeah. communicate with people right uh, so I, i mean i have studied maths and i think uh, i always thought like uh, you i cannot te be teaching all this whatever i have been studied to anyone unless i have uh like a lot of a uh, connection let's say i i learn elliptic curves okay i need to know what what they could be what they are connected to with some basic things basic everyday life so that so that i can i can uh, bring those things up and and i can motivate the students like they won't know they they won't care about the abstract concepts but since the, if if i say blockchain or whatever they will like oh cryptocurrency oh okay cryptocurrency is connected to blockchain then then they will study themselves right that's why uh, so yeah so the last point you made is really important to to yeah that's very very interesting um you talk about motivation this is definitely a a, a key um in order to uh, um make people uh, you know uh, be interested in not just in learning but also in a particular research you know to drive as a motivation uh, as a motivator to to keep driving them uh, forward yeah rakfi actually i i i was maybe this is something that we should uh, discuss offline <laughs> in our uh, upcoming uh, calls uh, uh, some sort of activity or something i was actually thinking more along the doing some uh some lightning talks like uh, where, uh, some sort of um, fireside chat about open problems in number theory things that are intersecting you with your um with your research area or in, in broader um that we can you know uh, possibly uh, you know incentivize you know the community in particular um some this is something that we uh, obviously this is why we need to think about it uh, possible problems that where computational methods could help shed light you know i guess uh um, i'm trying to think about a famous problem here i don't know maybe the uh riemann hypothesis problem for example <laughs> you know if we can build a computation uh, something i mean uh, most people think it's true the hypo the, the thing the uh, riemann hypothesis my will will hold but you know it could be maybe we can find some computational method that can help us try to find some sort of a counter example <laughs> you know it only takes one <laughs> one counter example to throw the entire the entire thing you know uh, off you know right so you know maybe we should have i don't know I, i'll take an opinion also from the community members maybe like george and this and what do you think maybe we should have some series about uh, open mathematical problems uh, in particular interesting ones uh, famous ones that whereby maybe some computational method could uh, could help I, uh, i mean i'm not really sure about riemann hypothesis i would really i would really hope and pray that if somebody yes, proves, proves true because <laughs> otherwise my entire life is thrown away anyway <laughs> uh like thinking along what you're saying like basically machine learning assisted proofs and things yeah. like that so there was a recent uh, there has been something recent going on quite interesting it's called murmurations of l functions let's say okay interesting 
so there is an article on quanta.org about mm -hmm. this and i would really encourage uh, people to check out this so check out the article on quanta.org okay what well, i can do uh, simon's collaboration are involved in this okay and, and i've heard quite a few talks on this and this is so just go to Quant just google this murmurations of l functions uh, quanta.org you will see the article and this is uh, th this has been some really recent uh, something exciting that machine learning has assisted basically in showing something towards bsd of elliptic curves yeah the movement of birds it's it's related to that so i would really people to check this out yeah maybe what i can do is actually to try to get one of the authors of this for a <laughs> webinar if they are available and uh, if they are maybe you yeah. could host it <laughs> uh, so you can give uh, the mathematical contest into it and introduce the guests and uh, you know we can try drive the conversation i wonder if something like riemann hypothesis might be undecidable yeah that's another uh, that's another thing that could uh, that's what i would really yeah. hope like people mm. can really choose their side and then mm. they can work on it if they want and mm. Let everyone remain in peace. <laughs> <laughs> People worked for a thousand years to prove Euclid's parallel postulate <laughs> until they realized that they could go either way with it. Yeah, it's an in yeah. <laughs> well, generally, number theory problems are very, um, as uh, someone used to do, some of the most intriguing ones are very simple to state, but then to prove. Like the Fermat one, <laughs> when Andrew Wiley told um, What did the Fermat say? Apparent, uh, what, uh, the proof is too, it doesn't have space have or something. Proof, but it is too short to write down in the margin. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it's notable that Fermat didn't <laughs> come back and say, OK, here's the expansion. I think he yeah. looked into it and realized it was tough. Yeah, well, speaking of Fama, again, he is an inspiration. He was a lawyer by the day. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then he used to do these things in the night. And imagine, like, he's running bread and butter of so many people in this generation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he would exchange letters with other mathematicians. That's yeah, that's how, yeah, that's how they used to do it in uh, old times. And that's like, that's how gradually it started. They realized that the community is growing this. So they should have some incentive and fellowships for people who want to come and join. And then this academia really became like a career option. And now we are seeing the the other side of it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. In the case of Fermat, uh, the, 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 um, it, it, it took like an interdisciplinary effort, you know, with different uh, <laughs> branches of mathematics coming into play to, to, to be able to put the proofs together. And uh, it seems like... Uh, it, he actually proved something else that as an implication <laughs> yeah he proved quite a general uh, mm. he built quite a general framework and proved quite many beautiful general things and then Fermat's last theorem was just like a minor a part corollary, a that, yeah and people have been working on that theory since then it actually comes back to elliptic curves yeah, yeah. He showed that the class of elliptic curves that includes Fermat's problem has this other nice modularity problems with properties. Yeah, basically every elliptic curve is modular. I think this was a conjecture before him. I think it was Shimura Taniyama conjecture. Yeah. And Taniyama committed suicide because he thought it's false or he couldn't prove it and then it was proved it also. that's how life is <laughs> yeah anything in the mathematics right <laughs> yeah. sadly yeah but yeah maybe maybe we should look at um, some um thing to continue the conversation especially in the context of uh, elliptic curve stuff you know like webinars and and this type of thing this is something that uh we could uh, look at just to um, expand more curiosity within the community, especially the ones who are a little bit more advanced uh, compared to the, to the ones who are just joining us. Yeah. Okay. So we are almost into, I realize we are almost into two hours. This is amazing <laughs> for like, uh, I guess this is the best way to wrap up. Right. So, yeah. So 
yeah, Rakvi, unless you want to say something, maybe we can leave it here. Oh, no, I just, yeah, thank you again. Uh, thank you, Bambode, for actually inviting me to give this course. And I really no, thank it. you. Thank you so much for your for your thing, for your awesome uh, sessions. And, uh, you know, uh, for making, I, I think, uh, you know, the community members will agree that it was very valuable. You know, your approach is very, it was very, uh, very helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll follow up with you offline about the, the other things. Uh, anyway. I'll stop recording and maybe I'll give you opportunity anyone who wants to say anything that uh, because I realize uh, I haven't stopped recording, uh, which is okay as well. <laughs>